Oh my God. This is amazing. This is fantastic. One, two, three, four. Aidy Roach can scarcely believe work has almost been finished on the building projects that will, for the first time ever in Belarus, keep children from being locked up in adult mental asylums as soon as they reach 18. Two remarkable young men, both named Sasha, will be given the first house in this new complex. Yeah, that's great. I love the view of the orchard out there. My name is Sasha Lovkin. I was born in 1988 in Pankratovka village. I want to become uh, a writer, uh, but uh, I'm disabled and have so strong obstacles. I'm trapped in my body. Sasha Lovkin was just nine months old when his father died by suicide. Sasha Haldiu was abandoned at birth and has never been able to trace his family. Both were horrified at the prospect of being locked up for life in Sultanovka Mental Asylum, 150 kilometers away. I don't want to go to Sultanovka orphanage because it's uh, uh, it's not great place and my friends told me that uh, the life there is not good and it's very sad to live there and when I told to my friends that Irish people building house for me they uh, get very upset because they uh, has nothing in Sultanovka <laughs> Today, the two Sashas were being taken to visit the feared adult mental asylum to meet their former friends for the first time. I have to say, it's 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 hard to be here, um, you know, with the two boys, because I know how they're feeling right now, because they know that this is where they were to come. And I think the full impact and the full realisation of what their life will be versus what it could have been um, is kind of coming upon them when they're here with their friends because their friends are exchanging stories about how their life is here. You know, having them here today, I think, just reinforces the importance of what Fergal and the builders are all doing, the challenge in their new house. And just all I want to do is just visualise them there in their own bedrooms, you know, having their own space, their own things, their own stuff, their own visitors, their own lives, and just living out their dreams and their hopes. And I just hope that that will be the, the example, that courage will be the example for the guys here, um, you know, to hang on in there until we can do something for them too. boys are making history. They're the first people with disability with special needs in Belarus that are allowed to live independently. The other scenario for them would have been like living in hell. And they both know what that hell is like because they have visited there. This is the moment that our boys, the two Sashas, have waited for all of their lives to enter their own home. But to get us to this place, You've had to come on a long journey, lads, a long journey of loneliness, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. You can be that painter. You can be a philosopher. You can be a writer, Sasha. You can be anything you want to be. This is your home. And love it, enjoy it, and peace to you both. Gorg Mila to everybody here. Fantastic.
runaway children who flee from broken and abusive homes are part of the darker side of life here. Most end up in state-run orphanages. But now they're being taken out of the orphanages in hand-picked groups of ten and allowed to live as families in Irish-funded foster homes. 32 homes, each named after a county in Ireland, are planned this year. В нашей Беларуси много детей, которые действительно счастливы, которые имеют всё. Есть и любящие родители, есть у них развлечения, есть радость, улыбки, всё. Но наряду с этим у нас есть большое количество детей, которых родители очень пьют. Они алкоголики, мама и папа алкоголики. Жизнь очень была, конечно, хорошая. Постоянные драки, пьянки дома. Вы убегали постоянно из дома. У меня как бы, с матерью не жила вообще. Она жила отдельно, мама. Сестра была моим опекуном. И самое, вот как бы, она меня заменила мать. Но ну, было, это были такие случаи, когда она меня пыталась убить. Это было два раза. Просто однажды я это, она пришла с работы, просто хотела продолжить свое гуляние, они там отмечали какой-то праздник. Я просто не хотела ее отпускать, как бы. Вот, она меня пыталась задушить. А второй раз был так, чисто то, что они с подругой тоже сидели, выпивали и, ну, там что-то поехала, она на меня взъелась, хотела меня зарезать ножом, остался шрам небольшой на животе, ну, и попала. Было всякое. Плохо, конечно, было. Я бегала по деревням. Пойти как бы некуда было. Ну, у меня была мама, был папа, были братья. Моя мама пила очень много. И папа. Мама меня била, но потом жалела. И брат меня бил. Аж мама... Она было все равно, она приводила мужчин в дом и с ними занималась ну, любовью, как это можно назвать, я не знаю. И при нас она это делала, и как я видела, как ее мужики избивали, я видела, как она с синяками ходила. Мне хотелось просто уйти оттуда, но я не могла, потому что там был мой брат, сестра. There are countless children, countless olias, countless nastias all around, dotted around this country is an impact on the economic backdrop to the situation that was created by Chernobyl in 1986. And I would love to be able to think that homes such as this one that we are here in, in Lipin village, um, that this would be something that we could replicate throughout the country. And if I was to say what's in my heart, it would be a real belief that it's one by one we will shut down the orphanages. This is just such a fantastic alternative to an otherwise almost unthinkable kind of a life that these children would live.